Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy! Welcome back to more Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. Last time, we scoured the Northeastern Sea and beyond, getting lots and lots of treasures and remodeling our ship. How many parts can you change on a boat before it's no longer the same boat anymore? We sure push the limits of that question. And this time, we find ourselves on the Isle of Ruins, the location of the third and final pure metal necessary to forge the Phantom Sword and slay Bellum. And I gotta say, when you name your country's capital the Isle of Ruins, you are just asking for the fate that this kingdom received. Starting off... What is this, a dungeon? Yeah, I don't know if we fought any of these inside of dungeons. I'd like to think maybe we have. A Geozard! I'm gonna gouge out your spine! And have you die a much more painful death than the other kind. I have to wonder if the concept of enemies showing masculinity by putting their weak point in more painful areas that the hero is supposed to hit has ever been done in a really fourth ball breaky game. Like, I put my weak point in my spine. I put it in my crotch! I'm so sorry, sir. Uh, you have my respect. To those with power, the path to the kingdom will bring glory. Path to the kingdom, huh? So we can finally go deeper into the... I'll... Ciela, we've been here all of 10 seconds. <laughs> there was no finally going deeper into the island. <laughs> uh, Ciela, Ciela, Ciela. You become less of a tutorial NPC and just somebody who's very out of touch with reality. I'm sorry. I, I'm starting to kind of feel pity for you. I don't know if I should... I don't know if I can really keep making fun of you. Uh, there's a signpost over there that we could... Link? Link, there you go. There you go, buddy. Uh, oh, okay. I, well, no, there wasn't... There were no rails down there, so I couldn't have plunked off of one. I just didn't make it for some reason. Uh, here! Rupee likes! I'm low on bombs, so I guess arrows it is! Skewer that rope! Make it a rope kebab! And there we go. Uh, you're gonna be another one, I bet. No, uh, perhaps? No! Okay. I guess if all of them were traps, that would just be kind of predictable and not exciting. Are you gonna be a trap? No, I don't. Oh, what? Okay. Boom. I suppose I could mix and match by getting in a few hits with the sword whenever I'm able to get in close and then just finish off with an arrow. Just so long as they go down quickly, it is all fine by me. Choose your way that you die. And then, uh, oh, that could have been bad. Uh, no, 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 no. I, I was slashing. Come on. All right. Gimme. 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 There are three hits. Getting a lot of rupees once again, just building on on up. Uh, no, 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 you're gonna spit me out in the water, no! <sighs> this part. Um, I've actually been kind of wondering. I've heard stories of people having, um, big rupees just spawn into the water and they're unable to collect them forever. What happens if a like like steals your shield and spits it out in the water? Can that actually happen, or can it not? I've never had the guts to actually go and find out, but it's a thought that's been in my mind ever since people have told me that they've had that happen to them, and I can't say I've even had the uh, former thing happen to me, like, all that much before, so I'm a bit inexperienced in the concept of having stuff that you really need falling into the water. Uh, anything? Note to self, don't roll. That hurts me worse than any enemy ever would. Uh, no, nothing over this way. We get through the maze, and we can exit to the north. Lots of grass here. And we'll hop down. Oh, more Stalfos Knights. It's okay, though. Not like they're really all that tough. <laughs> they try to jump out of the way, but they... Oh, no, 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 no. It's been a long time since we've seen a beehive, so I wasn't even thinking of that. I was just thinking, oh, hey, look, a tree probably has money growing on it, because that's how things seem to work in this world. <laughs> uh, yep, there you are. Uh, I don't have any arrows left. I gotta resort to using bombs. But it's okay, because bombs are debatably even better than arrows. <laughs> Nothing over here, maybe? Uh, that looks like an undiggable spot, but it also looks kind of like an X! Well, I caught on to the tropes eventually, now didn't I? <laughs> Feeling pretty happy about that one, because I was thinking that it was just gonna plink off of it, because it looks like it was made of stone, but... What about you? Any of these spaces have... Eh, okay, no, none of them are right on top of an axe. I'll have to remember that, though, that you can actually dig up these things that appear to be tiles. Anything over here, maybe, before we move on? I don't want to quite go on. Uh, nah, I don't have the guts to jump down there. That's probably just going to take us back to the first area. So we'll just go up here. And plot twist! It was named the Isle of Ruins because their favorite pastime was rolling rocks down a mountain. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, get through there. 
thought you were gonna break. All right, gonna be more careful. I've been rushing a lot and I need to stop that. Ready, you, and there, we make it through, nice. I am a master of touch controlled movement. What a dubious honor to be able to brag about. I don't know, man, like, I, I've, I've said things about the touch controls that it's better with a big stylus as opposed to a small one, and I do stand by that, and actually, um, I guess I have a story I can tell about this. Since recording last, I've been to PAX, and when I was there, after I was talking about my DSi XL stylus, now that was my favorite, I think I had five separate people give me those, so I have a huge stash of them now, and I'm probably not going to be without them for years, and I appreciate it so much. It's so good, because this is my favorite stylus, and I wasn't able to find it anywhere, and turns out they also sell them on the Nintendo online store, so I can help you in finding out where to find them, so you can experience the joys of it, too. Uh, I'm just so happy that I can play the game the way I've always wanted to. Impressive ruins they got here. I wonder if the pure metal is here. Let's get the king's key so we can wake up this land from its long sleep. Because... These amazing ruins mean that it mean there has to have been a kingdom here long ago. I'm starting to think that pure metal might be here. You had a change of mind in a matter of seconds because you were saying like, hmm, I wonder if the metal's here. And then you're saying, I'm starting to think it might be here. Hello? Beatles great, great, great grandma? This is the Cobble Kingdom, land of the sea people that was destroyed long ago. I am one of the four knights who serve under the king. I am the third knight, Bremier. I defend the seal of the land. You, boy with the regal necklace. Something from where King Muto sleeps is needed? So you seek the pure metal to forge the sacred sword and slay a great monster. Our King Muto did have the pure metal you seek. But a monster entered his temple, awakening him from his sleep. He is enraged. Can you enter his temple and slay the monster? Can you calm the king's great rage? Well then, show us how you can defeat the monster and soothe the angry king. Once the king has calmed down, I believe he will be willing to hear your story. To enter the great temple of King Mudo, the sealed land must be resurrected. Meet the second knight, Doylin, who sleeps in the temple to the island's east. That temple is treacherous, but if you can overcome it, he will acknowledge you. I will open another path for you. Let it lead you. These names of these knights, as well as King Mudo, and I guess also the name Cobble Kingdom being a building material, are references to the carpenters who appeared in Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. It's Probably about the last place I would have expected them to reference those characters in an ancient fallen kingdom of places, but I don't know, maybe they were really hands-on rulers who decided that they would dabble in carpentry while also running a kingdom on the side. Sort of like how you have those king generals in mythology who didn't just sit on their butt and rule, but were out there on the front lines fighting alongside their troops. It's a strange and interesting way to be admirable and get the coveted vote of the construction worker when it comes time for re-election. Big Red Rupee, nice! Good one, good one, good one, good one. We had a bridge open up and take us over this way. I'ma slay all of you so I can get a red rupee. I don't really like saying I'ma out loud. I just think it sounds kind of awkward whenever you say it out loud. It's one of those things that I felt like was only ever meant to be said in text and it just sort of happened that way. Um. Going further into the lore here, um, kind of putting together a timeline of events of everything that's happened in the backstory. This is the kingdom that worshipped the Ocean King before Bellum came to these lands. Bellum came here and began absorbing the life force of the natives, which is what happened to this land. And then the plan with the ghost ship was put in where Bellum started luring people into this land so he could absorb their life force as well with the help of the Cuba sisters. This is sort of a preview of things to come for the rest of these waters if we don't do anything about Bellum. And it, it does a pretty good job of that. This is probably the most interesting looking location that we have been to. I like the lore behind it. I like how we've been told the story little by little through the different ghosts around here. And it, it's pretty interesting. It's nothing too wild or anything crazy lore that I think anybody's going to be making theories about. I'm kidding myself by saying that because of course people have made theories about it because they're Zelda fans, it's what we do. I've done that myself too, where I've made tons of theories about nothing. I remember in the days leading up to like Twilight Princess, I was theorizing about its timeline placement before it was even out and, oh man, all those wasted months. <laughs> all right, uh, whoa, 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 okay. Uh, gonna dodge around these, gonna be patient, just like I said I would. I said patient, not coordinated. 
and not being combo fodder at that. Remember that you have your shield. You can turn and face those with your sword drawn to deflect them. Uh Ouch. Oh, uh, wow. This is hurting me more than I think any location has up to this point, which I welcome it. About time you up the difficulty a little bit. I've been mentioning lately that enemies haven't been hitting that hard, but I asked and I received. Up on the second floor, another pedestal. I am the second knight, Doylin. I am the protector of the key that keeps the land sealed. I am impressed that you were able to clear the traps and monsters in this temple. I will not stop one who is trying to return the king to sleep. Take this king's key. You got the king's key. Some say it holds the secrets of the Cobble Kingdom. Take good care of it and check it on the collection screen. Can I just say that this is the coolest looking key I think I've ever seen? Like, <laughs> this thing's amazing. I would totally get a custom key to my house that's this. Like, why do you get to have the coolest design of anything in this game other than the giant eyeball enemy? <laughs> Take that key and return to the third night, Premier. Release the seal and restore our kingdom to its rightful shape. I'll meet you over there. I want arrows. I want arrows. I need arrows. There's no shops on this island. I mean, I think it's fair to expect there being shops on this island with how many people have run businesses on deserted islands throughout our travels. I'm just saying it doesn't have to make sense. seal has been broken with the king's key. The land has been resurrected. Take the new path and meet the first knight, Max. The water drained. We can no longer speak to him at this pedestal. I'm gonna check for arrows. <laughs> Trying to be all serious and dramatic, but I just really, really want arrows and I'm finding none of them here. We go outside. And the water lowered in that pyramid actually lowered the water all around the island. Half the island that was underwater is now floating. The water is drained away. Let's get down, Link. Did the water go down or did the island go up? We might never know. Now, uh, by looking at the map, you can see that there is a cave entrance that was not previously exposed over this way. We'll hop down, go inside, and rupees galore. Not arrows galore, unfortunately, but in this chest, wisdom gem. That's 19 out of 20, almost to the next upgrade. What's interesting about that room is that there's leftovers from earlier in development that imply that you would be able to go in that cave either with the water level up or the water level down. There is a version for both of them, yet you can never actually enter the cave entrance because it simply does not exist in that form. Um, over this way, Big green rupee, which, uh, wow, they sure punished the greed out of people that jumped down to collect that, because it's going to be a long ways back up now, isn't it? Ah, we can make it. It's not that bad. Uh, can't pull that, only push it. But I can push this one. Roll those, and then we make it back up, it looks like. I hope maybe I can roll this this way. Okay, whoa, that's kind of nice. It's like a puzzle game. We'll lift that up, break a pot in a very overdramatic way, and then go down, which, oh gosh, okay. It's not like I really have to worry all that much. I don't need to worry. I just want to shoot you in the head. <laughs> Such a satisfying feeling. Don't take that into context. I mean it toward the already dead, okay? Break that open. Then we'll break this one. Get bombs. That's almost as good. And at the end of this... Another wisdom gem! That is 20 of them! I think, I hope, I hope, I hope. Yes, it's 20 of them! We can actually get another upgrade! I think I might do that. 
Oh, I'm so happy about that. Now, there is one other collectible that I want to go grab, but we have to go back over by the other pyramid, the one that we um, got the key in. So I'll meet you over there. Actually, it occurs to me that if I'm out of arrows, I was praising the sword beams as being a pretty helpful projectile that proves you don't need to use arrows all the time, so why not? In the same place that I just was, we want to break that. And then go up this way, press this switch, and yes, now we can backtrack to the starting area and go back to where we were. I jumped down a little bit too early, so maybe don't follow me to a T. Be better than me. On the way back, just showing the map where I am, maybe it is for the best that I did go this way, because by jumping down here, power jam! Okay, fine, I guess you need to see this place anyway. All of those stone tablets, that was a spectacular amount of fail. Travel south from me. Wasn't really intending to have to go through the required area. I thought there'd be a way that I could just go back up north from where we were, but I guess not. Uh, there's a lot more rupees and just rupee lakes around here. Uh, wow, those take a lot of hits from the sword beams. I guess it's kind of what happens when projectiles don't cost anything to use. After traveling south, travel northwest from me. Good thing you weren't a like-like, because that would just be really insulting to your kind if you were only guarding a green rupee. <laughs> Uh, what about you, actually? I think we went to you out of order. Ah, travel north from me. Five. The path of the stars will reveal the crest. I think probably up around the middle is where we want to go next. There it is. Travel southwest from me. I guess the reason why the green rupee likes no longer exist is natural selection, because who's gonna go after a green rupee compared to a red or a blue one? <laughs> and this last one, travel east of me. So that means... We have that crest in this pathway. All begins and ends with me. That seems to be the typical rule of any symbol that you gotta draw. Uh, less squigglies, more shapies. And then up this way, yep, there, uh, I, I swear you're not anywhere near these things when they just kind of suck you in from far away at times. Eat it, eat it, eat it. Now, if we go over this way, if the map is to be believed and I'm to not get confused again, that means that we are able to go up toward that other bridge and finally cross over to the other pathway. Yes, there's the pyramid, there's the treasure, and it contained Courage Gem. Very lucrative ruined kingdom you got here. You guys should be proud. You stocked up really nicely before you lost it all. I mean that only in the best way possible. However, they were not done yet, a big red rupee. <laughs> they were really, really a prosperous place in their day. Now, by hopping down over here, we can't go around, or we can't get inside of this giant golden pyramid that's in the middle. We're gonna have to do a little bit more exploring to do that because the pathway into that is locked. So I'm thinking, back in front of the east pyramid, we're gonna go to the south. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Cool, I guess the coveted green rupee lake, which is ironically now the rarest of its kind, uh, might just very well be extinct. Nothing over this way? Okay, just had to be absolutely sure. And following this very out of bounds looking area, I kind of like how open and explorable this place is. All we have are Stalfos. There goes one. And here goes the other. All right, well, I guess I'll just meet you back by the starting area since we know how to get back there. We're just gonna uh, follow this area to the west and then we'll have an opportunity to jump down just as we did before. There's a southern pyramid that we're gonna walk around. And here's the entrance to this one. It's not the giant golden pyramid that we saw up north. Max's Temple. I like to think Max is the first knight because he was the only one with a normal name and thus the only name that the managers could remember whenever it was time to promote somebody. I am the first knight, Max. So, a human can break this island's seal. I can allow you to meet him if you aim to defeat the monster, as you say. However, you must first pass this trial that I am about to present to you. So do you seek to face my trial? We do. I see, then allow me to explain. To enter the king's temple, you must draw the secret crest on the corridor door. 
Discover the crest, and the great corridor will open to you. You must solve the riddle written on the tablet in the corridor. I will open the entrance to the corridor. Now be on your way. I am a more exceptional little hero than you expected me to be from just looking at me. I already had the crest recorded because of the unconventional way that I explored this place. Like I said, very open and explorable. Look, that door. That's the entrance to the corridor to the Great Temple. With the entrance to the Great Temple revealed, we're going to end things off there. Next time on The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass, we go inside. See you guys then.